There are some male pathologies that have overlapping features. This video will teach you easy ways to differentiate and remember these high yield pathologies and score extra points on your exam. This video is only part one of common male pathologies. So this video will focus on comparing testicular torsion and epididymitis, as well as varicoceles and hydrocele's. Let's take a look at the first group. Testicular torsion and epididymitis are both similar because they are both painful. Testicular torsion occurs due to inadequate fixation of the lower pole of the testes to the tunica vaginalis while epididymitis is usually caused by infection and inflammation. The inadequate fixation seen in testicular torsion can result in twisting of testes around the spermatic cord. Initially, the venous system is affected first. There is compression of the pampiniform plexus of the testicular vein and reduced venous blood flow. Then eventually, the arterial system is affected as well. It's important to note that the spermatic cord contains the gonadal artery, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. If the testes twist around the spermatic cord, it can lead to ischemia. It's easy to remember that epididymitis is caused by infection or inflammation because of the itis in its name. So as you can see, itis is highlighted in red. So itis denotes that there is infection or inflammation. So for these patients, if they are less than the age of 35, it's usually due to STI such as gonorrhea or chlamydia. However, if they are over the age of 35, it's most commonly due to E. coli. Other ways to distinguish between testicular torsion and epididymitis is through the clinical features. So first, the onset in testicular torsion is sudden, while for epididymitis, it's a gradual onset. A positive Prenz sign is when there is a decrease in scrotal pain with elevation of the testicle. This occurs in patients with epididymitis. However, it can be negative in patients with testicular torsion. A positive chromasteric reflex is elicited by stroking the inner part of the thigh. This causes the cremaster muscle to contract and pull up the ipsilateral testicle towards the inguinal canal. This is positive in epididymitis. However, it is negative in testicular torsion. Patients with testicular torsion can also experience nausea and vomiting. However, patients with epididymitis experience fever and urinary symptoms such as dysuria and urinary frequency. How I remember that there is a positive print sign and positive chromasteric reflex in epididymitis is by the P in the word epididymitis. So that's why those three P's are highlighted there. So that's an easy way for you to remember key clinical features that can give you even more points on your exam. Another way to distinguish between these two conditions is by using labs. As mentioned before, the itis in epididymitis lets you know that it is due to infection or inflammation. This also clues you into what lab findings you can expect. Epididymitis may have an increase in inflammatory markers. However, in testicular torsion, these markers are normal. Urinalysis may also reveal pyuria in patients with epididymitis, however, it is normal in patients with testicular torsion. Another difference is the finding on Doppler ultrasound. Patients with testicular torsion have no testicular blood flow on Doppler ultrasound. 
However, patients with epididymitis have normal or increased testicular blood flow on Doppler ultrasound. It's important to note that if you are clinically suspicious of testicular torsion, usually you would not stop to do a Doppler ultrasound. You would go straight to the management that we will discuss soon. For epididymitis, it's also important that we do a nucleic acid amplification test for sexually transmitted infections. Now let's do our first question of this topic. So the last line says, what is the best treatment option for this patient? So this is a two-step question. We have to know what the diagnosis is and then know the best treatment. A 19-year-old male presents with pain in his scrotum for 12 hours. He is sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently. On exam, there is swelling of the scrotum, tenderness of the prostate, and relief of pain when the testes are elevated. What is the best treatment option for this patient? So I believe this patient has epididymitis. The clues in the question are the fact that he uses condoms inconsistently and also it describes a positive print sign. And remember the three P's, the P in epididymitis, the P for positive prints, and the third P for positive chromosteric reflex. So for these patients, it can be due to either E. coli or Neisseria or gonorrhea. So option A is how you treat testicular torsion. Option B is possibly how you could treat a UTI. Option C is how you would treat an STI. So the answer is option C. And option D says watchful waiting. So that's just a filler, that option is out. Question number two, what is the most likely cause of his testicular pain? So for this, we have to know what the diagnosis is. But based on the options here, we also have to know what's the pathophase behind it. So let's read the entire vignette. A 15 year old male presents with left groin pain for four hours. He has experienced mild intermittent scrotal pain while playing baseball. He is sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently. On exam, the left hemiscrotum is swollen and tender. He has a negative chromosteric reflex. And his vital signs appear to be within normal limits. What is the most likely cause of his testicular pain? So I believe this patient has testicular torsion. Because of the acute onset, he's only been experiencing it for four hours. And also he's had scrotal pain before with activity. So patients with testicular torsion can experience some sort of scrotal pain prior to presentation. And this occurs with like a twisting and untwisting that causes the pain. The next major clue is that he has a negative chromosteric reflex. So let's look at the options. So option A, germ cell tumor, no, because he has testicular torsion. Option B, patent processus vaginalis, no. We'll discuss this more when comparing hydrocele and barricocele's. Option C, increased mobility of the testes. Yes, so the, app, the answer is definitely option C. Option D, bacteria from urinary tract. This is cluing into epididymitis, but the patient has testicular torsion. So the option D is out. So the answer is option C, increased mobility of testes. So testicular torsion and epididymitis were both similar in that they were both painful. However, hydrocele's and varicocele's are both painless. Now let's take a closer look at the causes of hydrocele's and varicocele's. So hydrocele's are caused by fluid accumulation within the tunica vaginalis, while varicocele's are due to abnormal enlargement of the pampiniform plexus. 
Another key distinguishing feature is that there is positive trans illumination in hydrocils, however, it is negative in varicocils. How I remember this is think veins for pampiniform plexus and the V in veins and the V in varicocils. So that's how I remember it. And for hydrocils, it would just be the opposite, meaning the ac fluid accumulation within the tunica vaginalis. How I remember that there is positive transillumination in hydrocils is that hydro means water. So picture a clear balloon filled with water. If you were to shine a light, you would be able to see that light. So there are two types of hydrocils, communicating hydrocils and non-communicating hydrocils. We'll first focus on communicating hydrocils. There are two types of hydrocils, communicating hydrocils and non-communicating hydrocils. If a patient has a communicating hydrocil, it's very important to rule out an indirect inguinal hernia because they are both caused by an incomplete obliteration of the processus vaginalis. They also both increase in size during bolsavo or on standing. If you would like a video about hernias or any other topic, let me know in the comments below. Now let's do our first quiz on hydrocils and varicocils. So the last line says, what is the most likely cause of his scrotal findings? So we have to know the diagnosis and the pathophys behind it. A 55 year old man presents with painless hematuria for the past five months. He has a 20 pack year history of smoking. Physical exam reveals a flank mass and soft strands in his right hemiscrotum. It does not transilluminate. What is the most likely cause of his growth cell findings? This patient may have renal cell carcinoma. As the question mentions, painless hematuria, extensive smoking history, flank mass, and a varicocil. The soft strands description could be describing a classic bag of worms description of varicocils. So it's asking what is causing the patient to have a right-sided varicocil. So it requires you to know some embryology and anatomy. Option A, incomplete obliteration of processus vaginalis. So this relates to hydrocele or indirect inguinal hernia. So that's not the answer. Option B, inadequate fixation to tunica vaginalis. That's testicular torsion, so that's not the answer either. Option C, malignant cells between gonadal vein and renal vein. This is describing the venous system of the left testes. However, the patient's right hemiscrotum is affected, so that leaves us with option D, which says malignant cells between gonadal vein and inferior vena cava. This is correct because the right gonadal vein drains directly into the IVC. If you liked this content, power up that like button. If you don't want to miss any of these videos, hit subscribe and that notification bell. And to continue learning, click this video right here.